always wonder where I begin on these things, and I, I, I think the right way to begin is to say thank you. And, and actually, that's the message that Senator Mike Lee asked me to convey. We have great appreciation for what you have done, what you are doing, and what you will be doing. I don't know how you do it. I'm talking to you, the teachers. I don't know how you do it. I, I admit I, I couldn't do this. It can well be argued, or well, it's well known, I'm not an educator. Uh, as you will quickly find out, I'm not particularly educated. <laughs> but I do appreciate this opportunity. And, and on behalf of Senator Mike Lee, who carried this ball in the Senate, and I had the honor of working with him and, and, and others in the House, uh, we come to you today with, really, with grateful hearts for embarking on this. You know, it was December 17, 1903, that two bicycle builders from Richmond, Indiana, that had moved to Dayton, Ohio, did something for the first time in the history of the world. Right here in North Carolina, these two guys flew a plane with motorized assistance. First time in the history of the world. It only took 40 years from that day before a hot shot jet jockey named Chuck Yeager jumped into the Bell X-1 and flew faster than the speed of sound. It only took 40 years from the time the Wright brothers, Orville and Wilbur, flew that plane here in North Carolina to break into the sound barrier. And in less than half of that time, 20 years later, on July 20th, 1969, some of us were glued to our televisions in the middle of the night as we saw Neil Armstrong take one small step for man and one giant leap, giant leap for mankind. And now it's taken us 50 years for us to loosen the bounds of the bonds of Raleigh and turn it over to you all to take us actually into the next iteration of education for our state. You are truly pioneers. No question about it. And I, all of us are grateful for this stuff. Yes, we know that you're going to be building the plane as you fly. Scary proposition. I always wonder about the pilot on every plane I get on. Did he graduate at the top of his class? <laughs> and my eggs are all look like kids. But I spent eight years in the Air Force, so I generally have a bit of confidence, but you can always tell the difference between a former Air Force pilot and a former Navy pilot that's on your airline. Former Air Force pilot starts way out there, plans way ahead, and glides that thing, eases it down nice and slowly and on a nice even path, and he gets to the runway, and he sort of just slides it in there and you roll to a stop. Navy pilot, he puts that thing down to the <laughs> We're not going to run away from it. 
I like to tell people, surround yourself with people that don't agree with you. You don't know the value of your convictions, you have to defend it. You may find that you're wrong and you need to change your mind. Politicians aren't good at changing their mind. They think they're going to be called flip-floppers. That's ridiculous. We need to change. That's what education is all about. Now, I, I grew up, sort of grew up after the military. I spent almost 40 years in the food business. And I know that, oh, now I lost you. Where, where are you? That uh, was in the food business here. Food lion. There you are in the back. We were just talking. We actually both spent some time in the, in the chicken business. And I got to tell you, the ed education business is a lot like the chicken business. <laughs> now I know everybody thinks, okay, what, what is, what kind, what was he doing this morning before he got here? <laughs> Listen to me for a second. In the chicken business, every morning, about 20 truckloads of fresh chickens, fresh young chickens, show up outside your door. There's big ones and little ones. Some with broken wings, some with an attitude. Your job is to take every single one of those chickens and add value to them and keep them moving. Some of those chickens, it's not working. You get, they, they're coming down the line, but it's not, you gotta take them off the line and handle them separately. But at the end of the day, your job is to add value to every one of them and keep them moving. Well, that sounds like the education business to me. So the food business was a great preparation for me to come into education. And I'm grateful that you all have taken up this mantle. And we have high expectations. The problem is we don't even know what our own expectations are. We all want to make it better. I have a silly little card that sits on my nightstand in, in Raleigh, because I have to spend nights in Raleigh. I live three and a half hours away. And every morning I get up, I read that little card. Hard to ask a question. What am I going to do today that's better than the best that's ever been done? And every night before I go to bed, I, there's that car sitting there, and I just turn around and say, okay, what did I do today that's better than the best that's ever been done? Most of the time, eh, I didn't have such a good day. But every once in a while, Every once in a while, just like with those kids, every once in a while, it's, it's there. That little spark, that flame, it turns into a bonfire. And that's, you're embarking on what we believe is one of the better things that we have done, and maybe one of the better, one of the best things we've done is better than what we've done before. It's to unleash you, it's to launch you. Now, we've got an obligation as a consequence to stand behind you. To understand that we are going to screw some things up. We're human beings. So it's got to be a two-way street. <coughs> We've got to hear from you. Yeah, that means sometimes you're going to shake your finger. We're not interested in blame. We're interested in learning. Because that's the goal for that's what we're trying to do for our kids. And you all are, I think, uniquely positioned to do this know the demographics of your district and of your kids in your classroom. My guess is, a little experience, probably by the end of the second week, you pretty well know where every one of your kids are and probably where about where they're going to be. And we want to change that trajectory from a nice even, we want to, we want to sharpen that edge. We want to sharpen that, that trajectory upward. We're going to learn from you. You need to tell us. This ain't working. Let's try that. <clears throat> I'm reminded of, of a story. I, as I mentioned, I spent some time in the military. I had once had the, I'll call it, opportunity to chat with a older German guy when I was stationed in Germany, who actually was on the cliffs of what we call Omaha Beach on D-Day. He said, you know, there's no reason for you Americans to have been successful on D-Day. There's no reason. We had the high ground. We had shorter supply lines, better weapons, more time to train, to prepare. You were a bunch of country hicks that had been bouncing around the water. Most of you were sicker dogs before you got to the beach. You know why you were successful? 
because the average American fighting man said, this ain't working. Let's do that. The rest of the world sits down and waits for orders. <coughs> That's your job. Figure it out. I'll try my best to help. We're going to try our best to help. We want to learn from you. We have an opportunity, a unique opportunity, and with opportunity comes responsibility. We have that unique opportunity. Now is the time. I'm so excited about I'm. I want to be off your back. I want Raleigh to get off the back of education and get underneath and support it. Amen. Amen. So I <laughs> greatly appreciate what you're doing. I'm, I'm excited for it. I'm a little nervous because we're going to have the naysayers. That goes with the territory. Okay, don't let them get down. Well, I'm in politics. Uh, my naysayers are wolf in the way of it. But we can do this together. Thank you very much. <laughs>